All right, gang, so as far as equipment, like I said, you can run what you brung. So if you had something that was just a regular carry holster, let's say something like this, let's say a Serpa. Now, some places don't allow Serpas just because they're scared you might press the button and fire what at the same time. But you could use something like a Serpa on a lot of the matches. A lot of them don't care. Um, and you could load out of your pocket. But let's say you do a couple of these matches and you want to be a little more competitive. Um, the thing about three gun is a lot of the stages vary. You might have one that's very shotgun intensive with a little bit of pistol. It's not always going to be all three guns on every stage. So with that, you need some versatility. So what I choose to use when I'm competing, and there's a lot of different manufacturers, but my personal preference uh, right now anyway is a Safari Land. Okay, and this is the Safari Land belt. Uh, you're simply going to have an inner belt, which is going to be Velcro. So let's say you had your jeans on. You're going to put this on and put it around your waist through your belt loops, you know, as tight as you can comfortably hold this, but this is going to be on all day. You'll take the outer belt, which the outer belt has the hook fasteners all on the inside. And then essentially what you're going to do is you're going to put this around that inner belt and then you'll just find your adjustment. And then you've got a lock tab that is right here. So that'll keep everything from coming off. So that way, when you start to draw or pick up, it's catching on your belt loops, but then the belt stays affixed to that because of the Velcro. Now, this is a, a Safari Land belt, and these are what we call ELS clips. And you can move these around in different locations along the belt. So on mine, I have, you know, a multitude of ELSs depending on the stage and how it's set up. If I need to run a lot of shotgun, I might have another shotgun holder here. Now this one is by Invictus Practical, holds the shotgun shells and it's staggered, uh, basically drops down on a ladder so as you're loading um, it works better for you if you're loading strong hand or loading um, support hand. And I'll show you some examples of that a little later on. But let's say I didn't need as many pistol holders. Now what you've got is you've got some locking tabs on the bottom and those lock in. I'll show you what the back side of this ELS clip looks like. It looks like a fork and you've got two forks there that will go in and then they'll lock. Once it locks in, it doesn't come back out. And you can adjust your angles based on where you place them. Here I've got something by um, Blade Tech and then this would be my AR pouch. This would be for my pistol pouch. This is the shotgun. And then on this, this is called a QLS, okay? The QLS is a little larger and it will accommodate a holster setup. I try not to run a holster on ELS. I don't know if it's sufficient enough to hold it long term. And if you drop your pistol or if it comes out of your holster and hits the ground, you're probably going home. And you got to remember a lot of these, you know, if you're traveling to them, you've got fuel, you've got hotel, food, you've got all that involved. You don't want to be going home on the first day on the first stage because of some equipment malfunction. The way this works is very similar. It has the larger clips. It locks in on the top here. And then on the bottom, it also has another retainer. So this would go in like that, and it's not coming out. Now, my preference on a holster is to run a hooded holster. That way, when you're running, you know, because you're sprinting on a lot of these stages, going from stage to stage. Let's say you just got done with your, your rifle or your shotgun and you're going to go to your pistol, you don't want that coming out. I'm not a big fan of, of uh, friction retention holsters. Um, there are some good ones. This is one that uh, STI sells. It's made by a company called Nerd. Uh, it is a very, very good holster. You see a lot of these, but it's just friction retention. Now, you can adjust the screw tension on it so that it doesn't pop out. Of course, the tighter you tighten it, the harder it is to draw. On this, basically, thumb goes to the left, the hood clears, and then I still have friction, and the pistol's in there. So this is the belt setup that I run. It's what I recommend. Um, but like I said, you can get by with a lot less. This is just if you're starting to work your way up and up and you're wanting something that's quick and versatile and you can tailor it based on the stage needs. Um, Invictus Practical also makes a chest rig. Now this is for a shotgun stage that might be really, really intensive. You know, maybe have 28, 32 shotgun shells. Uh, including the eight that are in your shotgun. So something like this would actually be run on your chest. And so that way you've got a whole array of shotgun shells there. All right, gang, so a quick demonstration of how this works. This is the inner belt. This is the one you're gonna feed through your belt loops. You're gonna work this all the way around. And typically what I do is I get this as tight as I can comfortably wear it. 
tightening it up, and then I'm gonna rotate this around to the back because it's all about managing that real estate that we have up front. So that gives me a smooth area up here so I don't have an overlap. I do the same thing with the belt. On the belt, I want the buckle system towards the rear because I'm not drawing anything off the small of my back or anything that far to the rear of me. All the ELS clips are up front. You'll notice I have a different space, uh, spacing here and that's based on the shotgun carriers. Um, so that way I can move them around. I always start off with the QLS. I'll put it where I need it first. I'll work it around and then I will hook the tabs on the back. So now I have an open belt. So I'll go with the holster because I know I'm going to need it if it's a pistol stage. I'll get into place. Maybe I'll need one shotgun. I can place the shotgun here or here. Maybe it calls for two pistol mags. So I'll put my pistol mags, maybe I can run it here, maybe towards the front. And then I always keep a spare in case I need something else. That might be another shotgun holder or something like that. And I can just move or accommodate um, the, the placement as, as Let's needed. Say you get into three gun and you really want to step up your game. Where most people are gonna find the issue is keeping that shotgun fed, keeping it reloaded. This is called a match saver. You can also see I've already had uh, a rear sight uh, machined into here, and so this helps with slugs, because you usually shoot slugs. I really have only ever shot one three-gun in my life that called for buckshot, so that's pretty much a non-issue. You won't be shooting buckshot. It's pretty much gonna be birdshot, seven and a half, eight, nine, something like that, um, and some slugs. That's what you're usually gonna be doing with the shotgun. The way the match saver works is the round is actually going to be locked into here. And let's say it's the, it's the last steal that you've got to do, but you just ran out. What this is designed to do is you can bring this in, drop it into the chamber, and close the bolt. And so that just gives you that plus one, your insurance basically, and it goes just like that. Now you can get really, really fast with this where it's almost seamless, just like that, and you've got one ready to go, you're not in the chamber. So let's talk about how we're gonna load this. Now, if I had a pocket full of shells, you know, I've seen everything from people reaching in their pockets and trying to get one, two, three, that doesn't really work that well. You're eating up too much time, you're gonna run out of time. So this is a, uh, this, is, this is something by Uncle Mike's. Uh, this is old school, very, very old school, but believe it or not, I still use it. Um, I use it personally for slugs, but the way that it works is, let's say I needed to get rounds into here. I can pull one out, insert, just like that. I could pull two out, insert like this. Still gonna be faster than me reaching in a pocket and not knowing the orientation of those shotgun shells. Now the key to doing that is when you pull it out, make sure that the round is resting on the ring finger. That way it enables you to get your thumb on the top and press in just like that. So this is old school, but it still works. It's good to know that method of reloading. Uh, sometimes you can be engaging targets. You can reach down, throw one in there if you needed to, or in my case, if I know that I'm gonna need a slug or a slug is coming up and I don't already have it in the tube, I could be shooting bird, load one, I'll have one more bird, and then I can shoot slug. So it's, it's versatile, they're cheap, they don't have to be on an ELS. Uh, this is just the system I use. They do have tech locks available for all of this stuff. So if you're just running a standard leather belt um, or a webbing, something like that, you could actually just put the tech lock underneath it and, and clip it on. Problem is, is they typically shift this way. So you'll end up having a big mess. Uh, it can help, sometimes it doesn't help. Now, on the Invictus Practical, remember I told you it was staggered like this. This helps when you're doing doubles or if you're doing any quad loading or anything like that. Now, a double is gonna be a little different. That's, let me back up for just a second. Some people reload like I do and they do it with the support hand, okay? There's some big name shooters that do it this way, but then you have the other guys that will rotate here, bring it up to the face and they'll load strong hand like this, okay? Now the reason I'm doing this is because you're typically going to grab at least two shells when you do that, okay? Now the way that I have this Invictus set up is basically I roll it, hold it under here. Let's say I grabbed two. I grab two like this. I'm used to grabbing four. Uh, 
you're going to hold it with your thumb on top of the brass. And then what I'm basically doing is laying flat and pressing in. So that's two rounds that just went in there. Okay. So that's loading a double. That's something you're going to need to practice. And remember earlier in the video, I mentioned knowing how to unload your shotgun rather than tick, 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 and rounds are just going all over the ground, all over the floor. And everybody's trying to catch them. You're basically just using that lever to help release these rounds okay so let's go over that one more time this is loading a double using the weak hand let's say I'm shooting I don't ever want to go to lock back okay I want to try to make sure that I still have the one in the chamber so that all this stays free for loading if I go to lock back I'm gonna to have to close the bolt first so I'm here I roll it over I'm going to grab two I'm gonna place it here press forwards. That's two rounds. I know I'm good to go, or I'll do that multiple times, okay? So that's loading two at a time. Call it a spike, or think of it as an ice pick. Once you get good at, let's say, this method of two, then what you can do is grab four. Now this takes some practice, but now I'm going to grab four. I'm keeping my thumb on the bottom. What I'm doing is I'm essentially loading two, four, just like that. And it can be done extremely fast, okay? Just takes a lot of practice, a lot of bloody thumbs, um, but that's the way you would do it with support hand for loading, okay? So we went over quads, we went over doubles, and then the classic, of course, which I showed you with that other one, believe it or not, you can actually be pretty quick with it as well. I haven't practiced this one in a long time, but let's say I've got four rounds in here. Let's say I needed four slugs. I could, in theory, while I'm shooting, stop, grab four, one, two, three, four. It's an old habit, keeping eyes on targets instead of looking at the gun, uh, but that would be loading four classic style, okay? So that's that. I'll go over the chest rig in just a second. All right, guys, so now this is the chest rig. I know it looks ridiculous but you come up with a better way and you'll be an overnight millionaire. Just like the guy that invented this stuff, I believe he was a firefighter, did a lot of shooting, and uh, came up with a ladder system. I'm gonna pull my bra up. But um, I typically don't load the outboard ones because it's too far to reach and it's too cramped up here. So I'll usually do a loadout like this and possibly some on the belt. Uh, basically, it's gonna work the same way. If I am shooting and I need to reload, I can drop it down, I can grab two, four, or I could just keep going four more. So I've got eight in there. So the chest rig is really versatile. I usually start in the middle and then kind of work my way to the sides. But then I also have the option of doing the ones on the belt itself. So like I said, don't buy this stuff initially. This is just stuff that I use, um, but it's good gear. This is what works for me. You know, whether it's competing on the national or regional level, um, this stuff has always worked. I've been using it for a couple years now and I wouldn't really recommend uh, I mean, I'd recommend trying it out, you know, trying different ones out and, and deviating from the box, but I know what works. Try to at least borrow some from a buddy that's got some first uh, before you spend the money on it because the stuff is pretty expensive. But like I said, this is later on. It's for when you decide that you want to get into three gun and you want to be more competitive with it because um, you'll never be competitive loading out of your pocket. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening.